and how we should exude mercy and gentleness to each other. And so I want to dive back in that, but I want to come at it from a different standpoint this morning. Praise God, because as believers, we go through so many different things in life and we live in this natural world. We're not of this world, but we are in this world. And so in this world, we experience all kind of discrimination this week. I came across something that actually interests me. And that thing is that discernment and discrimination are by definition the same. But when we begin to dive deeply into these meanings, you realize that discernment and discrimination are actually very different. I'm going to read this to you really quickly before we give my word today. And uh, this is from, I cannot pronounce this name all the way, but it is from Luther. I am reading off of the internet, off of lutherte.webillinois.edu. If you want to go back and check this out, it is a blog post that was posted that I'm reading from. And it said, is it good to distinguish between individuals? I'm going to go down to the third paragraph. It says, discern and discriminate are also from the Latin. Dis meaning lack of, apart, or opposite. Meaning to shift or to separate. The denotation is thus to make a full and careful separation. The connotation of discern is one of perspective, recognition of non-obvious underlying truth. The connotation of discriminate is quite the opposite, being more of an unjust imposition of difference where none is deserved. This is how we perceive discernment and discrimination. How we perceive discernment as being something spiritual that you gain this wisdom or this insight from a spiritual source versus discrimination. All you have to have is eyes or ears to see and hear the difference between how people look, act, and sound. Let us turn to 1 Corinthians. There is one that comes from God and the other one that comes from our flesh. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, from Paul, divinely appointed according to the plan of God to be an apostle of the appointed one, Jesus. Our fellow believer joins me in writing you this letter addressed to the community of God throughout the city of Corinth. For you have been made pure, set apart, and in the anointed one, Jesus. So I'm going to stop us really quickly because in 1 Corinthians 1, 2, he, Paul begins by saying, you have been set apart. So when people encounter you as a believer, they're going to notice something different about you. It's going to happen because you've been set apart. This is according to scripture. He said you've been set apart in the anointed one, Jesus. So not only have you been set apart, but you've been set apart in him, in Jesus. And God has invited you to be his devoted and holy people. So now he just told you, he set you apart, and then he told you what you are set apart as. You are set apart in Jesus as holy. Not only you, but everyone everywhere who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and ours also. So in this scripture, it said you being in Jesus sets you apart and makes you holy. You being in Jesus is what sets you apart and makes you holy. Not just you, but everyone around the world. So that means not the people in your household only, not the people in your neighborhood or your community, not the people of your state or city only, not the people of your country only, not just the people in your continent. He said everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus as there is, as you can be anywhere from anywhere, any person, and you can be set apart as holy and the bible says in first corinthians 1 3 may joyous grace and endless peace be yours continually from our father god and from our lord jesus the anointed one i am always thanking my god for you because he has given you such free and open access to his grace through your union with jesus the messiah now here again he is telling you 
you've been set apart. He said, you, not only were you set apart, but you were made holy in Jesus, but also in Jesus, you have free and open access to his grace. You got a lot of benefits by being connected to Christ. And in him, you have been made extravagantly rich in every way. So you don't have to have a certain education. You don't have to have a certain job or be of a certain tax bracket. You just need to be in Jesus. Who Jesus. He said, you have been endowed with a wealth of inspired utterance and riches that come from your intimate knowledge of him. My God. So you don't have to have a high IQ. You don't have to have a PhD. You just have to know him. Jesus. For the reality of the truth of Christ is seen among you and strengthened through your experience of him. And so how do we get to know Jesus more and more? How do we get the reality of these things? How do we get the reality of holiness, the reality of riches and wealth and grace? It says, by seeing and through experiencing him, you are strengthened through your experience. And so now you are not lacking any spiritual gift as you eagerly await the unveiling of the Lord Jesus, the anointed one. He said, you're not lacking anything. All that you need has already been provided in the spirit as a gift. As you eagerly await the unveiling of Jesus, he will keep you steady and strong to the very end, making your character mature so that you will be found innocent on the day of our Lord, Lord Jesus. God, why am I going through all of these things? So that your character can be mature and you will be found innocent on the day of our Lord Jesus. It's not because of the color that you were born or the gender that you were born that you're going through these things. You're going through them so that you can be built up in him. Ooh, Jesus. And God is forever faithful and can be trusted to do this for you and in you. For he has invited you to co-share the life of his son, Jesus, the anointed one, our king. And so the Bible continues in 1 Corinthians 1, 10. It says, I urge you, my brothers and sisters, for the sake of the name of the Lord, to agree to live in unity with one another and put to rest any divisions that attempt to tear you apart. Be restored as one united body, living in perfect harmony. For it can form a consistent choreography among you, having a common perspective with shared values. Hallelujah. Move down to 1 Corinthians 1 13 said, but let me ask you, is Christ divided up into groups? Is Christ divided up into groups? No matter what you look like, no matter where you come from, no matter what you sound like, no matter what disabilities you have, we are all one. We all come from the same source, which is God. And he has a purpose for each and every one of us. We were born to glorify him. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to go to 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, I, I'll start from the beginning. It says, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, my fellow believers, I don't want you to be confused about spiritual realities. For you know full well that you were, when you were unbelievers, you were often led astray in one way or another by a worship of idols, which are incapable of talking to you. Therefore, I want to impart to you the understanding of the following. No one is speaking by the Spirit of God who would ever say Jesus is the accursed one. No one can say Jesus is Lord Yahweh unless the Holy Spirit is speaking through him. It is the same Holy Spirit who continues to distribute many different and varieties of gifts. The Lord is the Lord Yahweh is one, and he is the one who apportions to believers different varieties of ministries. The same God distributes different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gifts and ministries, uh, ministry as he energizes and activates them. Each believer is given continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to not benefit just himself, but for all. For example, the Spirit gives to one the gift of word of wisdom, to the other the same Spirit, he gives the gift of the word of revelation of knowledge. 
And to the other, the same spirit, the gift of faith. To the other, the same, he gives the gift of healing. To the other, the power to work miracles. To the other, the gift of prophecy. To the other, the gift to discern what the spirit is speaking. And the other, the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues. And another, the gift of interpretation. Remember, it is the same spirit who distributes, activates, and operates these different gifts as he chooses for each believer. Just as a human body is one, though it has many parts that together form one body, so it is, so too is Christ. For by one spirit, we all are immersed and mingled into a single body. And no matter our status, whether we, whether we are Jews or non-Jews, oppressed or free, we are all privileged to drink deeply of the same Holy Spirit. In fact, the human body is not one single part, but rather many parts mingled into one. So if the foot were to say, I'm not a hand, I'm not a part of the body, it's forgetting all of the vital parts of the body. And if the ear were to say, since I am not an eye, I am really not a part of the body, it is forgetting that it is still an important part of the body. So think of it this way. If the whole body were just an eyeball, how could it hear sounds? If the whole body were just an ear, how could it smell different fragrances? But God has carefully designed each member and placed it on the body to function as he desires. A diversity is required. For if the body consisted of one single part, there wouldn't be a body at all. So now we see that there are many differing parts and functions, but one body. It would be wrong for the eye to say to the hand, I don't need you. And equally wrong if the head said to the foot, I don't need you. In fact, the weaker parts, the more vital the and essential they are. The body parts we think are less honorable, we treat with greater respect. And the body parts that need to be covered in public, we treat with propriety and clothe them. But some of our body parts do not require as much attention. Instead, God has mingled the body parts together, giving greater honor to the lesser members who lacked it. And he has done this intentionally so that every member would look after the others with mutual concern and so that there will be no division in the body. In that way, whatever happens to one member happens to all. If one suffers, everyone suffers. If one is honored, everyone rejoices. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. So we see here in 1 Corinthians 12 that we are all one in Christ. The Bible said there's, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a non-Jew. We're all one in Christ. We're all important. And as a matter of fact, he said the lesser is given greater honor than the greater. He said the body parts which we think are less honorable, we treat with greater respect. And so if you are a person who was born into a world where you are already seen as lesser, I want you to know that God says that you are are worthy of greater respect. Come on now, I don't care if you are a woman who they call the weaker vessel, or if you were born in, in, with a skin color that is discriminated against, if you were born in a country that's looked down upon, it doesn't matter. God said, the least shall be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God loves you. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Does God judge based on skin? Does God judge you based on your hair texture or the length of your hair? Does God judge you based on where you were born, based on your disabilities? Does God judge you based on your gender? Does God judge you based on your age? Galatians 3.28, 3.28 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew or Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. And so God is not judging us by where we come from or what we look like or by our gender. God is not even judging us by our age. Let us turn to 1 Timothy 4.12. In 1 Timothy 4.12, he said, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. And do not neglect the gift that is in you, which is given to you by prophecy with the laying of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things and give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. And take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continuing them. 
For in doing this, you will save both yourselves and those who hear you. Do humans judge us on these things? Yes. Is it right? No. Let us turn to John 7, 24. Jesus said, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. And so we see here, God says, don't judge according to the law. Don't judge based on how it looks, but judge according to what is right. And so can ra racial discrimination or gender discrimination, age discrimination, or any other form of discrimination, can it keep you from the love of God? Let us turn to Romans 8. And I want to start at 31, and it says, We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor angels nor principalities, or powers, or things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we see everything that we need is provided in Christ. Our riches, our knowledge, our wisdom, our understanding, our peace, the love of God, all are in Christ. Our salvation, hallelujah. Our strength, hallelujah. So how do we demonstrate this love back from God? If God loves us no matter what we look like, no matter what our, our voice sounds like, or no matter what our walk looks like, no matter these superficial things that we boast about in our everyday life, does God judge us on? So if God is not judging us on how we look, on our outward appearance, what is he judging us on? 1 John 4 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether they are of God. And so here we see again, God wants you to use your discernment, not discrimination, but your discernment to decipher one spirit from the other. Test the spirit by the spirit and see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And by this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He, know, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. It is the love of God. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. In this, love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And if his love has been perfected, if we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent the son as the savior of the world whoever confesses that jesus is the son of god god abides in him and he in god and we have known and believed the love that god has for us god is love and he who abides in love abides in god and god in him love has been perfected among in us that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he, he who fears has not been made in perfect love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must also love his brother. And so 
here we see the question answered is how do we demonstrate our love back to God? And that is the pick of gear in first John 4 21. He said, In this command we have from him that he who loves God must also love his brother. And so when we see people who discriminate and tear us down because of how we look or for superficial things that we cannot change about us. You may have been born with blue eyes. You may have been born with brown eyes. These, these are things that you didn't have any control over, that people want to discriminate against you about those things. Know that in order for that person to truly have the love of God within them, they have to love you from a pureness that comes from God, which would not allow them to look at the color of your skin, the color of your eyes, the texture of your hair, your gender, your weight, whatever superficial things that people look at and judge you based on that instead of judging you for what's on the inside of your heart, which is what God says that we should judge each other by. He says to test the spirit by the spirit to see which kind of spirit they are, to see if they are from God. And so we circle back to this definition of this word of discernment. Instead of looking at the outward appearance, we shall always be seeking what's on the inside of that person. Holy Spirit, reveal to me the intentions, the mindset of this person. Show me what the right thing to say, the right thing to do. We often in this faith are taught to train ourselves to treat other people well. But we have to start with treating ourselves well. And treating ourselves well starts with seeing ourselves well. And I want you to know it doesn't matter what you have been told. It doesn't matter the history of your family, the history of the country of which you were born. God has a purpose for you. He has made you to glorify him. He made you with a specific purpose to glorify his name. And so you ought to love yourself because God loves you. You ought to be gentle with yourself because God is gentle with you. Praise the Lord. God loves you. And I want to show you exactly who you are. We were all born for his glory. Last scripture, 1 Peter 2.9 verse says but you are a chosen generation a holy priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light who were once not a people but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy may the Lord add blessing to the reader reading and the hearing of this holy Word. I want you to know that you were reborn into a holy nation. My nationality, your nationality is holiness. You belong to God. Hallelujah. 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 You belong to God. And so you don't let anybody look at your outward appearance and tell you what you can and can't do, tell you who you are, who you are not. Because God does not judge by outward appearance, but he looks with inside of your heart. He looks with inside of your heart. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. That you love us for just who you created us to be. That when you created us, oh God, hallelujah, you made no more state. That we are fearfully and wonderfully made, oh God. Made in your image and in your likeness. Thank you, Jesus. That you withhold no good thing from us who are called to your purpose. And every person born was called, hallelujah, hallelujah, to glorify your name, hallelujah. And so we thank you that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess your name, Lord Jesus. You are our savior, hallelujah. We give you praise this day, hallelujah, for every form of discrimination being under our feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so God, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. There is nothing that can separate us from the purpose and the call that you have on our life. We thank you that when you open the door, no man can shut it. When you say yes, no man can say no. And so we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus that we have come every form of discrimination. We have overcome and defeated 
the rejection in the name of Jesus, even though humans may say no, God, you have a yes waiting for us, oh God, so we're not moved by what we see, we're not moved by what we hear, but we are moved by the hearing and the reading of our word in the name of Jesus. Lord God, your word says that faith without works is dead, and so Lord God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, asking, oh God, for you to give us the work that you have purposed us to do, that we may do it diligently and without hesitation. Hallelujah. According to your grace. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you for your mercy that is new in our life every day. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you that you're not counting the sins from yesterday against us. Therefore, Lord God, we release the sins that we may be holding in our heart against other people, against our children, against anybody. Oh God, we release it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you back the issue that we are carrying in our heart because it belongs to you. The battle is not ours, but it is yours. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray for the mercy of our enemies, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, that just as you were able to get us, just as you were able to have our soul, just as we were able to be called your own, just as we were able to receive salvation, our enemies shall receive salvation in Jesus' mighty name, that they shall be made clean, that they shall be made whole, that they shall be renewed in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you that there is no division among us in our life, oh God. We thank you right now for good godly fellowship. We thank you for the maturity to be able to make peace even in difficult situations, oh God. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you bridle our tongues so that we say th the things that you want us to say in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, we thank you that you are our shield of righteousness. You are a shield of faith, oh God. You are the one that guards our hearts and our minds. We thank you for the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. We thank you for the sword of the word. Hallelujah. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper to every tongue, every weapon formed against us. It shall fail in Jesus' mighty name. A thousand may fall by our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but the hands of the enemy shall not come near us. Lord God, we thank you that you open the door for entrepreneurship, open the doors for small businesses to flourish in this season in Jesus mighty name God we give you praise right now for divine strategy your word says that a man's gift make room for him and so Lord God let our gifts make room for us right now in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God open up the floodgates of heaven and pour us out of blessing hallelujah that we may continue to be able to do your work diligently hallelujah without hesitation diligently without lack in Jesus mighty name diligently without division in Jesus mighty name Lord God we give you praise oh God we thank you we pray over our country hallelujah that the hatred that permeates throughout this country country, oh God, will cease in the mighty name of Jesus, that the fear that lingers will go away in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, we thank you for the ability to have faith and get results. Hallelujah. We thank you for the ability to speak the word and get results in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, we thank you that we don't have to be Greek. We don't have to be Jew. We don't have to be from any specific country, any specific state. We don't have to be any specific color, any specific weight. Hallelujah. We don't have to be of a certain tax bracket in the name of Jesus. We don't have to be a specific gender in the name of Jesus. We just got to be whatever you called us to be. Whatever you created us to be is good enough in your sight, oh God to lay before you, to consecrate ourselves before you, hallelujah, to lay our plans before you, to lay our requests before you, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, you created us just the way you wanted us to be, oh God, hallelujah, we thank you for that perfection, hallelujah, that even though it may not look perfect to our eyes, it's perfect in your eyes, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, Lord God, we give you praise, hallelujah, Jesus, Lord God, we give you praise, hallelujah, you're so worthy to be praised, hallelujah you're so 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 worthy to be praised lord god we thank you for the holiness that you have placed in this nation hallelujah the holiness that you have placed in our very dna and our very being hallelujah we give you praise for it right now in jesus mighty name lord god hallelujah lord we thank you we thank you we shabak you this morning oh god we give you praise hallelujah lord god we thank you so much Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, Jesus.